Hello, everybody out there. This is Travis with the Broken Battery Podcast, brought as always, go figure, by Broken Battery Entertainment. And yes, Joe, I'm going to beat you to the punch. We are sponsoring ourselves. Again? Again. Oh, man. I'm a, I am so glad that everybody out there in the Battery Pack, as well as new listeners that are joining us today as we continue our fright-filled trek through the month of October. It's a pretty good month. It's an amazing month, a great season, and I am... I am being joined by the Burgermeister of Terror himself, the one, the only, Joseph. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Yes. Each new week, Joe gets a title. Yes. <laughs> and we're really glad you were, you were joining us. And first off, I want to get this out of the way. Please smash that subscribe button, like, like our videos, so you never, ever have to miss Anything we do because yeah. we're coming out with yeah. cutting edge topics. Yes, like, all the time. All the time, at least once a week. <laughs> but you know, happy early Halloween. I'm gonna say happy Halloween at every show until Halloween comes because it's such a great co- yeah. freaking happy, holiday. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Happy Scare Day. Scare Day. Oh man, I wish we could boil down. You know, all the holidays instead of just taking their names, just what they represent. You know. Happy Scare Day. Happy, happy Present Day. Yes. There you go. Happy Turkey Day. A happy Food Coma Day. A happy, you know, a Arbor Day. Yeah. <laughs> Tree Day. Tree Day. Um, so, we, I, I hate to break it to everybody out there, we will not be doing a spotlight because, quite frankly, I think this episode is going to be spotlighting a lot of stuff. Mm. It's weird. It's weird how you think that. You think so? Nah, I don't know. Whatever. Just go. <laughs> Just go. <laughs> Now, Joe, uh, when you think about scary movies, okay, yeah, do you think uh, the shorter the better or the longer the better? Like, um, I don't know. If it's good, like, you know, I mean, obviously, if, if a movie's good, no matter whether it's a horror movie or not, it's going to go quick because, but, you know, you're not, you, you know, you're not bored. You're not, you know. Right. But, you know. These anthologies, I think, might be, uh, you know, good for people right now because, you know, their attention spans are shit. Yes, so. and, I, and I'm glad that you mentioned it because that is our topic today. Yeah. They are horror anthologies. Now, for those of you who aren't really quite sure what an anthology is. Just and it, they throw out those those ones that everybody knows, but they might not know what we're talking about. Right. Okay, so here's a, for instance, um, not the TV show, which I absolutely love the TV show. Like, say, Tales from the Crypt. Yep. This movie came out in the 1970s. It is a movie that has four different mini stories in there. Now, they can intersect with each other or they might not intersect with each other. But the fact is, it's a movie collected of a bunch of shorter, little, like almost like short stories inside there. Right. So, that's what an anthology is. Or, like, if you're not into horror, like the movie Four Rooms. Yeah, Four Rooms. It's which an is, anthology movie. Exactly. You had four different stories set in a hotel, and now, now that's one that does intersect, because yeah. that movie is great. I absolutely love Four Rooms. You know what? I'll spotlight that. Fuck right, it. I'm doing a spotlight. Oh, man. You haven't seen it. Do it live. Four Rooms. We, If we get... Hey, put in the comments. If you want us to do a live stream of Four Rooms while we watch it, we will do this. We can do that. Yeah. Fuck the man. Yeah. We'll do this, <laughs> but we're going to be talking about horror anthology. We'll just make it. We'll just. We'll just uh, make it like reverse image, and then we'll be fine with. Uh, Absolutely, be like, oh, that guy's on the left side. Yeah, no, we're this is clearly, movie. clearly not the same movie. That kid sticking his t- toe in his mouth. I mean, that's not his left foot. That's his right foot. Yep. You, you have no idea. Yep, exactly. uh, the hooker is not dead. There, she is dead over there. That's right. But. As good as that anthology is, I think horror movies actually have the market cornered on the anthology stories because there's so many movies out there that are horror anthology stories. Yeah. But we're going to talk about some of the most notable ones, like ones that most people will know and some you might not know. And I mean, shit, me and Joe, when we were looking at this, we were like, wow, there's a lot of these. Like from the 40s, right, Joe? What's the first one? Um, The very first one, and it actually is like number one on the list, is Dead of Night. Dead of Night. Yeah. I have never seen this. I've you... never seen it either, and it's from 1945. And if any members of the Battery Pack or listeners out there have seen this, drop it in the comment, you know? Well, we would love input on this. There's actually like a Howdy Doody uh, ventriloquist doll in this one. Fuck so. that. That shit is creepy. Yeah. I'm sorry. And I it's think... all in black and white, obviously. Well, yeah, but I mean, like some of the greats are in black and white, right. though. Um, but, Joe, you know... 
I mentioned Tales from the Crypt, right? Yes. Tales from the Crypt, TV show. I was on when I was a little kid. I was not allowed to watch it because it, scre- it freaked me the fuck out. And my mom's like, no, you're not watching this. Are you talking about the HBO one? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, the, the, the opening alone scared the shit out of me when I was a little. Yeah. But. We won't go into that. <laughs> but as you know, it was based off an EC, an EC, EC, EC Comics uh Easy Comics book that got banned by Congress because they were like, oh, this is rotting people's minds. Yes. And along with lawn darts. Along with lawn darts. Yeah, let's let's worry about those issues. So the real pressing. <laughs> so they did this and and then they, they came out with a movie after that. It came out in the seventies, I, I believe in nineteen seventy eight. Uh or, yeah, you might be right on that one. I don't know. Give me a second, I'll get there. Uh Creep Show? No, there? not Creep Show. Oh. That that's coming. Oh. Tales from the Crypt that came in seventy two. Oh, I was wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a very good. I actually watched this not too long ago because I knew I primarily knew that as hey, there was a TV show Tales from the Crypt, and then they did two standalone movies, Demon Knight and Bordello of Blood. Yep, love Demon Knight. Bordello of Blood was another movie. Yes, it was. So, so anyway. As I like to call it, a pile of shit. Oh shit! And we, you know, we didn't have to put that. Uh, we talked about good vampire movies, right? We didn't talk about bad ones. Oh, that because that's a very bad. It's a very bad vampire movie, Bordello of Blood. It Act. has uh, what's his name in it? Uh, Dennis Miller. Yes, I, I, I know what I think. Action hero, Dennis fucking Miller. Yeah, for sure. I'm good. Go back to go to go back to Weekend Update, pal. Um, <laughs> so yeah. anyway, uh, Tales from the Crypt. These all intersected because I mean this the the movie starts out with these four people that are in a they're in a crypt and you're kind of thinking like why they're there and they got this mysterious guy that did looks nothing like the fucking crypt keeper from the TV series he's just a guy in a hood and he's British and it, it's obviously if, I think it was a British movie they're all explaining like these stories of what they remember before they ended up there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, some of these are pretty damn good morality tales. Uh, they, they had uh, one of them was the classic monkey's paw. Yep. You know the story of the monkey's paw, like oh I got it, and I wish this, and it always goes fucking bad for you. Right, and then it closes one hand, right? It closes one finger. One finger. And it, it should actually go like this. It should. <laughs> I am flashing the bird right now. It should end up in giving you the bird, yeah. not the thumbs up, because I'm pretty sure it does the thumbs up at the very end, which is very fucking condescending. Yes. I didn't realize monkeys were such smart asses. That's right. uh, <laughs> that one, uh, that had probably the most fucked up scene. And these spoilers ahead. They kept on wishing <laughs> in this monkey paws segment was the the wife and her husband wish for tons of money, right? Yeah, of course. And and like well, they, they should have wished for more monkey paws. More monkey paws, exactly. Unlimited wishes. Who never fucking thought of that? I think Aladdin, like the, the Disney one, came up with it first. Like you can't wish for more wishes. Yeah. Um. So it's one of the rules. It's one of the rules of the road. Uh, so they do this. They they make the wish for a lot of money, and like the husband's driving to work, and there's this motorcycle like following him like real fast. And I don't know why the guy in the car is like really worried about the motorcycle. I'm like. You know, if you just locked up the brakes, he'd he'd run into you. I mean, that guy, he's, oh, he's yeah, like yeah. driving for his life. You but gotta, at, you gotta watch out for bikers, man. Right. <laughs> you, you can't. I mean, maybe he was worried about it because he didn't know what was gonna happen. He didn't want to like run him off the road. I mean, you know. now he was like tailgating him. Oh. Yeah, not, oh. not like he was up on him. Oh. He was getting chased by this okay. biker. All right. Well, I mean, I at some point I have seen this movie. I but it's been a while. It has been a while. But. Like he's chasing at the very end, he looks up and he just sees a skull where the guy's face should be. Oh. So I'm like, oh, it's death. And she gets the money from his life insurance. So I'm like, oh, that's good. And then she's like, well, I'll just wish him back. To, I, I wish him back right now. And then like she wishes him back and he, the guy, he sh- his body shows up in a casket and he's like, Laying there and obviously dead body. She goes, oh, she goes, oh. She's like, she's all confused and shit, right? She goes, well, I wish him back to life. And the guy's like, no. You know, their, their buddy that's there that understood the monkey paw. Uh, and he comes back to life. He's like, you don't understand. He's been embalmed. And, and like, he's like screaming in pain and shit. And he's like, ugh. So she gets this fucking bright idea. She grabs an axe and starts chopping him up. And at this point, he's basically immortal. And I'm like, I'm like fuck this. I was thinking to myself, I'm like. That's a pretty good morality tale right there. Yeah. Well, you know, 
Trav, you got pretty excited about that. It was a, it was a good <laughs> segment. It was a good segment. I mean, I like that kind of shit. You know, people being greedy. I don't, I don't know. I w- I'd ask for money, too, if I had, like, a magic wish thing. You would? I, yeah, oh, well, powers of Superman, then, well, then that. Well, I mean, you know, it's yeah, they always just say it's the root of all evil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's a fucking necessity. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Tales from the Crypt, the original... Like movie, it's pretty good, and I we I don't want there are spoilers. I don't want to give away too much because everybody really needs to watch these because they're enjoyable, and watching, especially this month. I'm watching a clip from it right at the very moment right now, uh-huh. and I mean this has everything. It even has a man wearing a fez. It does, yeah. So but that's where she got the monkey paw. Yeah, no, yeah. that's. <laughs> and we're just kind of just like kind of watching it here. It's kind of it's kind of weird. It's kind of weird. <laughs> but tales from the crypt. I think that's the most. Um, Acknowledgeable, like I mean, they, they people know that one for the most part. The only other one I can think of is the Twilight Zone, and I'm talking about Twilight Zone the movie. Oh, okay. I mean, you've yeah. seen it. Oh, right? yeah, well, I've seen it. Yeah, that's a that's a pretty damn good movie. Absolutely, and they obviously adapted episodes from the original TV show to be on the movie, and they had you know bigger names, people, you know, and right. But I think the best part of that fucking movie was the very beginning where it had Dan Aykroyd's. Dan, Dan Aykroyd and uh, Albert Brooks are driving in the car and they're singing Midnight Special. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and I'm like, these two comedian guys. I'm like, oh, this is cool. And he's like, hey, you want to see something really scary? Yeah. yeah. Oh, he, he, he like looks away for a second and Dan Aykroyd turns into a fucking monster and rips his throat out. I'm like, dude, yeah. that's fucked. And, and then, then that, that one also had the uh, the one with the guy in the plane and the demon or gremlin. The, the gremlin, the yeah. Gremlin and, and tearing it apart. Instead of uh, William it was, Shatner. It was uh, John Lithgow. Yeah, the Trinity Killer himself. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and it also had the one with the really fucked up uh, short story with the little kid that could change anything. Yes. And they made fun of it on The Simpsons. I remember they made fun of it on The Simpsons one time. The Simpsons have done everything. Simpsons did it. Simpsons did it. And I'm like, oh, what was another one? I'm trying to think of another one that they did on there. I think those are the two ones that stick out in my mind They the did most. the monkey paw one on Simpsons, too. Yes, they did. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's well, the tree they, house of horror. The tree hor- house of horror is yeah. just, you know. Well, we're not going to include those because that, it's obviously... Those are parody. anthologies. They are anthologies, <laughs> they're in parody. Uh, I popped my pee on that one. Yeah. <laughs> Um, he, he, he missed his, his, he's got his mic muff, but he doesn't have his pee popper. <laughs> pee popper. But, uh, it, you know, we're talking about interconnectionality on that one. The very end of the John Lithgow thing, uh, he gets loaded in the ambulance. Yeah. Fucking Dan Ackard pokes his head around the corner. He's like, hey, how's it going? Pretty scary up there, huh? Yeah. And he's like, hey, you want to see something real scary? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, this is awesome. Yeah, they're good well, like that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Twilight Zone is great. I even love the TV show. Yeah, I did too. You know, it is also an, an anthology. Is the Twilight Zone pinball game? Is it? Yeah, I mean, it has several episodes referenced inside of it. So, oh, nice. And even Rob Sterling's voice. <laughs> just, letting, just letting you know. Well, Rod Sterling, you were a you were a prince, sir. Was it Sterling or Serling? Doesn't matter. No, oh, okay. <laughs> you were good, Rod. Yeah. Okay, Joe, we got what we got next. Well, uh, another well-known one, and then we'll get into some of the other new, newer and obscure, obscure ones. Um, we have the original Creep Show. Oh, Creep Show! Yeah, this, the perfect the, merger of John Carpenter and Stephen King. Yep. Oh, fuck, man, those scared the shit out of me. Yep, they were very good. Nineteen eighty-two, directed by George A. Romero. Oh yeah, I said John Carpenter. George A. Romero, not yep. John Carpenter, yep. but um, George A. Romero. Because because oh. it, it would have been because if it was John Carpenter, it would have been John Carpenter's Creep Show. Creep Show. <laughs> We're not dissing you, John Carpenter. We just think it's funny. Because <laughs> Stephen King does this too. He's got Stephen King. Stephen King's The Stand. Mm-hmm. Um, so, Creepshow. I mean, one... I mean, I remember every one of these... I watch this pretty much every year, right around this time. Yeah. Like, I think I mentioned in a previous episode... Um, Actually... Uh, this was also an EC Comics, too. It was. Yeah. Oh, no, no. It was inspired by EC Comics. Mm, no, it's EC Ma- Comics, a horror series. It was it? Oh, well, okay. I'm, reading, I, I, I'm I, reading it right here, man. Okay. This I, is not Wikipedia that I'm looking at. Here. I believe you. Yeah, I somebody, believe you. I, I, I always thought it was like an original concept, because like, they both loved EC Comics right. so much. And 
there's like, yeah, we're going to do something similar to DC Comics. Right. But, you know, Creep Show, like, I, I mentioned this on a previous episode. There's one segment in here where I was blown away. It still scares me to this day. It's the one with Leslie Nielsen from the Naked Gun. That was way back when I only knew him as the funny guy. Yes. And Ted Danson and that one hot chick. Oh, that one. I, yeah, <laughs> that one hot chick. I'm sorry. I'm not going to do the research on that one. She showed up for five fucking seconds. Oh, okay. Um, but the whole premise was Leslie Nielsen's a rich guy. Obviously, he's a scrupulous, mor- a scrupulous morals. He doesn't care. And Ted Danson's banging his old lady. Oh. He finds out about it. He Was it Adrian Barbeau? It was Adrian Barbeau. <laughs> Good call. Thank you. Thank you, Google. <laughs> hey, man, I said it. I know you did. Oh. <laughs> I told you not to shoot the messenger on this one. Um, so Adrian, Adrian Barbeau and Ted Danson... Um, Get captured by Leslie Nielsen. That's right. And he buries them in the sand up to their fucking neck and the tights coming in. Oh, yeah. That was that really, like, creeped the shit out of me. And then he watched it on TV, right? Yeah. He yeah. set up a camera. This is like, before, like, Wi-Fi. <laughs> like, like, he got, he got yeah, so he, people. like, ran a cable <laughs> all the way out to the beach. And, <laughs> and powered it. <laughs> powered it and ran the connector and everything, man. This guy... <laughs> Nobody noticed this. No. No. He not not that hobo sleeping on the beach. He's like, oh, those guys' heads are sticking out. That's how you keep warm, man. Yeah. Uh, so they died, obviously. Really? Oh, absolutely. I'm pretty sure they died having how this all played out. So that, that like, uh, then, like, he was reincarnated from to uh, Sam, Sam from Cheers? You got... Oh, my gosh. See, we're going to do a whole episode on, like, segue characters. Like, like we're going to actually write up storylines where they go from one thing to the next, and we could totally fill it in. There we go. We like our continuity, folks. <laughs> um, so they die, and then, fuck, they come back for their vengeance, and they look so fucking eerie. Yeah. And they're, like, speaking in that gargled water like they're drowning. Oh, yeah. No, that was great. Oh, yeah, how long you can hold your breath. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, oh, fuck this. And, I, and you... Look, and then mommy, I, mommy made you go to bed, and then mom made me go to bed after that. Yep. Yeah, and the thing was is like Leslie Nielsen, you don't like. I'm scared for the guy, but I'm like, this guy's a cocksucker. He just buried these people. He killed them. Right. So, you, yeah. I mean, you got to you got to uh, come up. And yeah, see. and you know, what I really love about this movie too is like it just transitions to the comic book panels too. I think it was yeah. really cool how they did yeah. that. Now you know that they did uh, they did a new series. Yeah, yeah creep, show. creep show. It was it was it wasn't bad. I haven't seen any of them. I, I got to get Shutter. I watched a uh, watched a couple. Shutter was uh, free, and it's I think it is now. Right now, Shutter is free right now for the month of October. So yeah, it's on there, and I think that they're going to continue it. Another good one in this creep show was the birthday cake one. Fuck that one got to me too. Yeah. Ed Harris, um, the fucking Ed Harris. yeah that bunch of fucking rich assholes like gather together and it's another it's an all these are almost all these except for the one segment in creep show with the guy that found that fucking ape thing in the in the crate in, in that university and like he was going to use it to kill his wife like this thing was like it was like it it's the last segment of the movie uh uh-huh. And there's this ape thing, and it like it just is razor collects it's kill it kills like two people in this university, and it's just in this box. It drags people into this box and, and murders them. I don't know if you remember it. Nah, I don't remember that part. It has been a long time since I've seen this movie, and I need to revisit it. But almost all these stories are um, ones about like, hey, these people did something wrong, and the dead come back and get their vengeance on them. Like the the birthday cake one. Like the, this old guy got killed by his daughter because she couldn't deal with him. He was like, he was just so demanding and she was taking care of him and he was rich. Right. He's like, where's my cake? Yeah. So she fucking, I don't know if she stabbed him or she poisoned him. I don't remember quite remember that. But he died. And like Ed Harris is hanging I'm, out. I'm seeing, a, I'm seeing a theme. Yes, I see this theme here. <laughs> yeah. So... I gotta get some oil for this chair, man. It's bad. <laughs> We're actually adding these sound effects to make you yeah, spooky. Yeah, yeah. And then it's not. It's it's somebody creeping up behind me. And then we go right from Creep Show One to Creep Show Two. Yes, we do. Creep Show Two. I think the most memorable part out of this movie was the one with the raft in the lake. Okay. Uh, I have only seen this movie once, and I believe it might have been in 1988. <laughs> <laughs> well, what it was is essentially the blob. I mean. 
it looked like the light. it was a slick of shit in this fucking lake and it dissolved human flesh and it a sentient and like it trapped these four people that are out there at the lake on so, the raft so it was like it was like the thing that ate tasha yar yeah and star trek the next generation i, I don't think it ate or he zapped her didn't it uh, i thought it like I don't know. Last time I saw oh, Star no. Trek, yeah, no, it was you're like right. 1988. It didn't, it, didn't, <laughs> it didn't absorb her. Yeah, you're right. It didn't absorb her. It just killed her. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know what? Um, I take that back about Creepshow 1. The first segment of that movie was the one with Stephen King in it where he was that like hillbilly guy and that meteor fell. Oh, yeah, yeah. And like it got on. It, it, it like grew everything really fast. He was just stupid. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. I mean, it didn't really scare me. I'm just kind of like, just don't touch it. <laughs> just, you see a meteor fall. I don't touch it, man. Yeah, it's actually saying in this article right here, the one that is the best of it is the raft. Yeah, that is the name of that story. Oh, absolutely, the yeah. the raft was great. Yeah. Um, They're saying it's like a, a remake of the Blob. That's hey, I'm not even looking at that. Joe's the research guy. <laughs> um, and like um, another storyline in there is the one with the wooden Indian that comes to life. A another classic example. Yes, old Chief Wood Wood. Old Chief Wood. Yeah. Yep. He like these uh, Indian reservation. These kindly old white couple is uh, is running the show, and these people come in and kill him. And like the seems Indian, logical. It seems logical. And the wooden Indian comes to life and straight up goes Apache on them, nope. and it's fucking great. Nope. Apache chief Man, in a chuck. Oh, easy. What? I don't know. What? I don't know, Joe. Was just, I don't. What's the next one? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's a native american just native let, american yeah, just letting you know man just like hey, you know. hey being part native american myself oh I'm not whoa, whoa, please all okay, right dude. i mean i am not 100 one 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 thousand seven seventy second uh cherokee like some people there you go i'm only an eighth but an eighth yeah well okay all right so, well i guess it's okay then. it's not okay, it's okay. I, if i offended anybody by using that term just, it's it's fine. Yes, I'm just messing with you. I know you are. It's, I'm going to put insert cricket noises right <laughs> after that. Uh, so uh, yeah, those are the most memorable ones. I mean, there are other segments in it. Yeah. Um, Vincent Price had his own. He did in 1960. Hello, this is Vincent Price. Tales of Terror. <laughs> Tales of Terror. Yes, that was nice. the name of it. And uh, this this is the uh, it, um, this is the one. It's uh, Roger Corman. Oh, Roger uh, Corman does good shit. One. Yes. Oh yeah. And uh yeah. So, you know, we all know we all know that uh you know, he was the man when it came to Oh, uh, Vincent Price or Roger Corman cuz eh, they're both of legends. Well, yeah, mean. both of them. I mean, more so more so Vincent Price. Well, absolutely. And different ones. And yeah. Then, and then uh you know, getting on into some newer stuff and probably ones that'll have and Quick note, I, don't watch Creep Show 3 though. Okay. Say like some company bought the rights to it, j j just complete shit. They did the whole thing was shit. Skip it. Skip it. Skip it. Yep. Yeah. And then this one is uh, the uh, basically the I can't I can't think of this movie without this movie or the TV series without singing the Eddie and the Cruiser song. <laughs> oh oh boy, I wonder what this one is. <laughs> Go ahead, Joe. It's Tales from the Dark Side. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. So <laughs> Yeah, I, Tales I, from the Dark Side. That was uh The show was good. Yeah, but you know what? The good anthologies, there's that overlay on there. Like in in Tales from the Dark Side, you had one of the Whoa Lawrence brothers. Yes. He it locked up in this this lady's going to eat him. This witch, obviously. No, so it's kind of like Hansel without Gretel. Hansel without Gretel, but they I don't think they kind of... They're just a bunch of like diabetic kids who are eating a bunch of fucking candy. Um, <laughs> like, 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 he had to stall her, so he kept on reading those stories, right? I mean, like, in like, like with Creepshow... It started off with uh, everybody's uh, Tom What's-His-Face with the fucking mustache. He was in uh, Halloween 3. Everybody is Tom. Oh, Scarrett? Tom Scarrett? Yeah. It's National Ta Treasure. He's a National Treasure. Him and his mustache. Tom yeah. Scarrett's the dad in the very beginning of Creep Show, and he Viper. throws yeah he throws that comic book away. Oh, yeah. Yeah, That's so right. it's all underlying with that. So anyway, getting back to Tales from the Dark Side. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, the most fucked up, I think the most fucked up segment out of there is the, the gargoyle one. 
don't know if you remember it. I do not. That artist sees a fucking gargoyle. Just it, it, well, first off, this artist is like down on his luck, all that shit like that, and uh, he's gonna get mugged, and he, this gargoyle comes out of nowhere and just fucking brutally kills these guys, and he's like, he's like, don't kill me, don't kill me, I won't tell nobody. And she's like, and and the, the gargoyle's like, okay, I'm holding you this, but if you ever say anything, I mean, wait, wait, I'm way more articulate than this fucking gargoyle. You are? Yes, I am. Oh, okay. And better looking too, oh, barely. My. So anyway. Oh, and he makes a deal, and the gargoyle for I don't know why how this is a fucking sealing the deal rakes his fucking chest with its claws, cutting him wide open, and he falls down bleeding. Shortly after, he's rescued by this Ray Dong Chong, <laughs> Ray Dong Chong, Ray Dong Chong, yes, of commando fame. Yes. Ray Dong Chong shows up and helps the guy out, and his luck instantly turns around. He and it, it shoots like what five seven years in the future. Mm. He's got kids with her. Everything's going good. Ray Dong Chong. Ray Dong Chong is that little bolt of of lightning, that little sunrise that made everything better. And then he just I don't know why he felt fucking guilty. Like I like honest truth. If I I marry somebody and I saw a fucking gargoyle and it said, "Don't you ever fucking talk about me." Right. I don't feel the need to tell them. It's not like it's pertinent to my fucking relationship. So, so, so you're saying I because I don't remember this. So Ray Don Chong knew about the gargoyle. No, or? no, no. Here's the killer, and it was a great. It's why I made this story so good. He tells her, and he actually pulls out a model that he made of the of the fucking gargoyle. Uh-huh. She's like, "You broke your promise," and her fucking skin peels off, and it's the fucking gargoyle. Oh. And their her, their two kids are little baby gargoyles. Oh. And then and like he's like, "I didn't know. I wanted to be honest." He's like, "Yeah, I know, but you broke your promise." And she bites his fucking throat out. And I'm like, "Damn, damn." I think I do remember that. Yeah, it, like I said, it's the ending that sells it. Yeah, yeah. Um. Other than that, I don't remember much about Tales from the Dark Side, any of the other stories in there. <laughs> so, there's a couple in here. I mean, there's one from uh, Trilogy of Terror from 1975, and it's, it's got, like, uh, some claymation puppets in it. Oh, yeah? And, uh, yeah. And it, this one was actually... Uh, this one was actually aired on ABC in March of 1975. Well, you know... I. <laughs> This is uh, it's ABC. And it's, eh, I don't. Eh, I don't like ABC. <laughs> there's a, uh, there's another one, and you said that you watched some of it, but um, uh, this one I believe is on Netflix. Netflix. Uh, Netflix. Uh, ghost stories. Ghost stories. Um, yeah, I don't. It was a while ago. Well, it wasn't that long ago. 2017. Yeah, I I probably watched it when, right when it came out. Were you like remember. watching it with your phone? Kind of, yeah, kind of. Um, I find myself doing that sometimes. One of uh, one of the Ted be- Lasso is my new phone show. Oh, is it? I, yeah, I mean, it's like critically acclaimed, but I'm just like eh, sometimes people can be too positive. S- snoozer. Yeah, I, know. <laughs> Man, I think many a nap. The um, the anthology series that from Netflix that I watched right when it came out was uh, VHS. VHS. And I I, well, I love one and two. They're both really good, and the whole premise. Is these guys break into this house and they find all these VHS tapes with all these different VCRs and all these TVs set up, and they're like, "What the fuck?" You know, they're like looking around, and then as they start playing these, and like after each segment, one of the robbers disappears. Wow. Oh man, it, it's pretty damn good, and like, like they were almost like sucked into it and killed. Yeah, yes, they're like, yeah. There's like one where um, there's one in particular where they pick the. Uh, one, like of course, each VHS shows a different story because they're watching it. You, it's a way to presenting it, mm. like everything else in these anthologies. Well, they, they, do they do they have to uh, adjust the tracking? I <laughs> 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 like. Fuck, I watched it to this part too many times. Yeah, I watched it here. Yeah, yeah my mom got mad at me before when I record this stuff with VHS. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, "Did you record? The, did, did you rewind on there a bunch of times and pause it?" And I'm like, "No." <laughs> Yeah, you did. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> Mom, I'm sorry. I made baby Jesus cry. 
<laughs> and then she sent you to your room and you had nightmares. Yeah, <laughs> for many a fortnight. Seems, seems like mom's doing that a lot to you, Trev. Absolutely. Um, so VHS, um, I haven't watched in a while. There are a few, and it, uh, people out there are going to have to excuse me. One and two kind of interlock in this in the fact that I'm not sure which segment goes to one or two, but there are a few that are pretty damn good. So you're saying that they're so good that you don't remember where one started and the other one stopped. Yes. All right. Well. Uh, like one, for instance, um, one of them, it was all about a guy who had like a GoPro on his head and he's biking with his buddy and fucking zombies show up and yeah. he, and he yeah. gets bit. Yeah, I'm, so, s- I'm seeing that right now when I'm looking at the VHS thing on here. Oh, that's, dude. That's the one right now. Yeah. That's a great one. They're and, biker zombies. No, they weren't on the bikes, but they were bikers. Oh, bikers. I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, those kind of bikers. <laughs> <laughs> so that one, um, there's another one where they were doing an interview on this like doomsday cult and like... There, it's a it's a documentary, and then like apparently whatever they were trying to do triggers, and they're trying to get the fuck out of there, and everything's all nuts and shit. Oh, that one's great. Yeah, I'm gonna have to watch this. Oh, absolutely, we have to have a, a bad movie night. Well, I don't, oh, think, good I, movie I don't night. even think I'm gonna wait for you. I think I'm probably oh. I'm gonna wait until you leave tonight. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna watch it. <laughs> okay, you can tell me what you think. Yeah, maybe. and then it was another one where a guy gets a bionic eye. Oh yeah, like Thor. Yeah, like Thor. And they don't ever <laughs> talk about it anymore. So he gets this bionic eye, so you can see. So you can see he gets, you know, these implants, and he starts seeing ghosts. But well, the problem why, is, why the problem not? is, is the ghosts start noticing him. And oh. like, there's a girl who got like a, that she understood what happens to him because she got like an implant in her ear, so she can hear now. Oh. But she can hear them also. She can hear ghosts. She can hear ghosts. Which is probably not as scary as being able to see, see them. Exactly, because he's like that. Like, there's just one part. Like They started noticing him noticing them? Yes, but the thing is, is once they notice, they start coming at you. Oh. And like... You uh, need some salt. You need some... I don't know if it's job um, supernatural rules, Joe. No. <laughs> so anyway, Some one salt and a and a fire poker. One one <laughs> as long as it's cast iron. Well, I'm sorry, it's like ten percent zinc. Well, that's not gonna work then. Um so one of the in particular is part was the girl went over to the guy's house because they were um she you know, he was scared and you know, they said figure sticking together would help him. And like she's laying on the couch and he sees this big fat guy that's like in his underwear, like standing over her, like he's like giggling and shit. He's like all like half decayed, uh-huh. and she's like, she's like, "Oh, that's that's Uncle Murray. Uh, yeah, he was a real fucking creep. Just just ignore him." And like she knew it. This guy was this thing was following her around, giggling like that. She knew it was her dead uncle. Oh, oh, fuck it, Uncle Touchy, Uncle Touchy. The like I said, first two VHSs, damn good. Yeah. Check them out. I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. Okay. Maybe maybe not today. Maybe not tomorrow. I don't, I don't know. I, I'm just not going to wait for you. Okay, that's fine. No, I just want to. I need to. I don't want to. I don't want to wait. So um, this <laughs> one could, you know, this one could be John Carpenter's body bags. <laughs> Was it John Carpenter? He's one of the directors of the stories. Okay, this has to be. I have to say, but I think I think because he didn't do all three of the stories that he didn't throw the John Carpenter on it because it would have to be Toby Hooper and Larry Silkus. Jesus, so, I've never seen this one. Yeah, no, I. I oh my god, it. I love to. I like all those guys. That's so so good. Oh my god, I. You know what? I am not the right person to be telling these people about this stuff right now because I am very disappointed in myself not knowing about that one. Yep. And then uh, another one that uh, this one really does tie in. Each one ties in kind of. Okay. This one, which was Cat's Eye. Cat's Eye, yeah, yeah, it does. It does. With the, uh, with the uh, very, very young Drew Barrymore. And, was this uh, before the Coke or after the Coke? Oh, this is like well before that. Man. I said very, very young. E.T. <laughs> it's when the coke started. No, it didn't. Yeah, it did. No, it didn't. Look it up. Oh, bullshit. Look it up, Google man. Uh, <laughs> I don't, no, you know what? I don't even want to think. No. She was like five. Shut up. <sighs> I, I think you're full look of it, shit. Look it up. I think you're full Look of it shit. up. And, you know, just because you can't feel your face doesn't mean I can't feel your words. Oh. oh. So... I mean, those are some of the anthologies. Like, 
the, the great thing about the anthology things is, like I said, they all interconnect into a wider narrative that's kind of thin, but it's just kind of like there to present it for you. Yeah. It, there, well, you know, we did. We missed. Uh, we missed the other one too. Uh, Southbound. Southbound. Yeah, we I forgot. just saw this. Yeah, um, we forgot to mention Southbound. Southbound came out in 2015. It's on Hulu right now. So Hulu. check it out. Hulu. Hulu. Huru. All right. We're mentioning you streaming services because we're trying to get people to watch this choice material. Yeah. Um, and it's all set on this stretch of highway in the desert. And you're not quite sure what the fuck's going on around there. And then, like, people are just driving up to these random places and all this bad shit's happening to them. Well, it, okay. I mean, you want me to give it away? I mean, I'll give no, it away. No, no, no. Don't tell me because I haven't seen this one yet. But it looks it looks like the most interesting out of the newer ones. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It, like, it got so many awards for, like, like all these festivals that it was at. They're like, like oh, yeah, best horror Best horror anthology in years and shit like that. Well, this one is this one is saying that it contains tricksters, demons, vengeful spirits, and serial killers, all in one movie. Uh, check, 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 yep. check, and Yahtzee. Yep. So yeah, check it out. It's Southbound. A, it's it's uh it's the quote on the thing is it's a joyride through hell, well worth buckling up for. <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck writes this shit? Uh, Andy Crump. Good job, Andy Crump. Yep, I think I think he, I, I mean I could read the whole thing if you wanted. Somebody to. somebody with the, the the nerdiest name writes one of the coolest taglines yeah. for a fucking movie. Yeah, Joy ride through hell. Joy ride. Well <laughs> worth buckling up for. <laughs> says Andy Crump. <laughs> See, I love those movies that they just hodgepodge all kinds of stuff into them. Mm. Like I don't know if you ever saw Night of the Creeps. Uh, I've seen it once. Yeah, Night of the Creeps. It involved aliens, slugs, zombies. In college. <laughs> in college. In college. In college. In college. <laughs> but, you know, I think we are we might just do a straight-up movie review about Southbound once you watch it. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, we could. Um, definitely worth it. And, um, you know, if you guys like it, would like us to do, like, a weekly movie review, just a short synopsis. I don't know stuff. if I want to spend that much time with you. Yeah. <laughs> Feel like, drop it in the comments. Let me let us know because we'll, we'll do two a day. We'll do two a week. We can get it done, especially if we do a quick synopsis on this. Like I don't know, man. It's hockey season. It is hockey season, it's but stuff. we can make it happen, Joe. We, we can. We could try. We can do this. We can do it. <laughs> but folks, you know, I want to thank everybody for listening. Um, again, your support means everything to the channel, and. We uh, please implore you join the battery pack. It's our pleasure to have you. So we enjoy going through this stuff, letting you know stuff that we think is good. Again, it's our opinion, and you know, come back at us. Say, hey, you guys don't know shit. Yeah, sure, that's fine. I mean, I mean, you, I mean, you know, that's the thing is like really on this episode, they could come back and be like, man, Joe didn't have any idea what was going on. <laughs> <laughs> you did a pretty good job. Yeah, I mean, there was only so many of these that I saw. You know, like scary movies, man. They they really they mess with me. Do they? Yeah, kind of. Which one messed with you the most? Uh, this is a quick. I, I mean, like one of the creepiest ones that I ever saw was Return of the Living Dead. Absolutely, uh, I thought that that was like that was like when they talked and they did all that, and stuff. you shot him in the head to do shit. Yeah, yeah, and, and, fuck that. And it was, you know, it was just like. Man, that movie really like messed with me, and like I mean, I've watched it since the first time I watched it, but I think I watched it for the first time when I was like it, when it came out right at VHS. It came out when I was like thirteen, and it kind of tripped me out for a while. Yeah, it, it, good job, Toby Hooper. Yeah, another great thing that he put out there. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, the, oh, I mean, then they came out with number two, and I kind of just it didn't scare me anymore. And, you know, and the other thing too is is like I I would have to say and. You know, my I since I've had kids, um, the other one of my other problems is is that it's hard for me to watch a scary movie in my house because I don't want the kids to hear it. Right. And you know, on top of that, like, so I haven't been watching as many as I would like to recently. Yeah. Because like, you know, my t one my one my youngest daughter's room is right next to the TV. She hates it when we watch Walking Dead. Oh, really? Yeah. So she's all like, can I put on my TV? And, you know, and it's just like, I feel bad. But, you know, that's it's really cut into my horror watching films. It's so. okay. We'll get you back on track. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, folks, thank you for joining us today in our anthology examination. Yes. Um, yes, there, we know there are tons out there. And we were talking about ones that are the most notable. And, you know, 
they have gotten some of the most acclaim. I mean, and we mentioned a couple of stinkers, but I mean, we can't be negative all the time with stuff. We can't no. talk about all the bad stuff. I've been, I've been trying to be more positive. Super positive. I'm, just, I'm trying. Sky Zone. It's, it's just hard. It's 2021. Joe's <laughs> Joe's been jazzercising. He's been doing good. Yeah, you know. So we want to thank everyone. We want to thank you again and again and again. Thanks for joining the Battery Pack, and we will talk to you soon. Stay off the pipe. Don't forget to wipe.